Hi guys, I'm Nian and today I'm doing my November wrap up. I know it's super cliche but I can't believe that it's December already because that also means that my exams are coming close and that's kind of not the best thing to think about. Excuse my voice, I'm having a cold. Today's wrap up is going to be a little different from my previous wrap ups because I am going to do my wrap up in order of how many stars I gave them starting at the lowest and ending at the highest so we can end on a high note. The first book I want to talk about is Simple Weg Gelukkig Zijn, 101 Verhalen, which roughly translates to Simply Be Happy, 101 Stories. It's by Ine van Hofstraten, which is a Flemish, so Belgian writer. I don't know any of her other work. My dad had a workshop by her, I guess, and just picked it up because he thought it would be fun. Simple Weg Gelukkig Zijn is a collection of short stories really short it's one page per story and the book has the goal to inspire the reader to get off the couch and go chase their dreams the book just really didn't convince me in any way it's just really cliche things it talks about like go on safari in south africa sing in the car when you're standing in a traffic jam Wow. Take another road to work, be in love, swim with dolphins, take a big bag of popcorn. I don't know, it's just really cliche stuff. It's fun. Another reviewer says it would be better to read these things in like a weekly column in a paper. I guess that would be better because they're fun. But I don't really think I would have picked this up if it hadn't been gifted to me. The second book I want to talk about is In Zeiten des Abnehmenden Lichts by Eugen Ruge. I'm sorry, the light is being really annoying, so I have to put the book now now. In Zeiten des Abnehmenden Lichts is a German book, of course. I had to read this one for class. It's about the division of Germany and how different generations of the same family deal with Germany being whole again and differences in opinion about communism and capitalism and how the war still influences generations a long time after it has happened. I didn't really like this book. I don't like the genre to begin with. German literature tends to have a lot of stories about families in which the author then talks about more than one generation with like an underlying clue to it. I just really don't like the setup of that because it jumps in time a lot and then also switches between perspectives a lot and I tend to get really confused by that and not know what is happening to who. I think if you look at it from a literary point of view, it is a really good book, but in terms of enjoyment, I would not really recommend this. Then the third book I want to talk about is Daniel Durandai by George Eliot, or better Mary Ann Evans. Daniel Durandai is a story about Gwendolyn Harleth and Daniel Duranda. Their lives cross, but they're not in love or anything, it just follows both of them, so we again have more than one perspective. Gwendolyn learns at the beginning of the book that her family has lost all their money and she is really used to luxury. She returns home and doesn't know what to do until she marries for money and then of course she isn't that happy at all. I don't know what else to tell you. This is a chunker of a classic with so much description. After like 300 pages I started skipping the descriptions because while some people might think them really beautiful, I think they are really obsolete and I tend to have this problem with bigger classics that there's just pages and pages of description and I tend to skip to the dialogue because I like character driven stories but I just want to know what's going on as well. There has to be a right balance. So these all got two stars. I don't have any three star ratings this month so we are going straight to the four star ratings. The first book I want to talk about is Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. I don't really know how to review this. It was grand and gibberish and confusing and beautiful and heartbreaking. It's a story but 
it is poetry and some things are really vague and confusing and a bit messy but the story um, needs to be that so it's not like a, a fault it's okay and I think you can read this in like an hour an hour and a half tops I really urge you to pick this up so the book is about a family who loses the mother figure and a crow comes by the house to take care of the man and the two boys until they don't need him anymore and the crow character is said to be based on that huge crow so i am definitely looking into picking that one up soon shrill notes from a loud woman by lindy west i thoroughly enjoyed this i listened to this on audiobook and it was part body positivity talk about fat people about what it means to be fat stories about feminism this really had it all as an audiobook you're really swept into lindy's thoughts and emotions as she tells about various situations she's been in especially through her comic career as well and i think that was very interesting then i also read the promise of life i got the promise of life through netgalley and it's a story about a woman who has a very controlling and emotionally manipulative boyfriend her pregnancy and the choices she is making to ensure both she and her child have the best futures possible this was a very intense story divided into different parts and each part tells the story that happens uh, from a different perspective so we begin with danielle's story the protagonist and then follow her mom's point of view etc etc it does kind of make the story longer than it has to be because different things are told more than one time but it also valuably shows us different perspectives which complete the story in a way then i read the girls by emma klein i received the girls through net galley as well i have a separate review video for the girls up so i will link that girls is a bit hard to define but it's really a story about evie who's 14 and how she is not really feeling well being a teen at all and how she meets these people and how they change her life forever then I also read Earthling by Dave Brink. This is a short comic about veganism. I picked it up at a bio-organic store, you know what I mean. And I thought it just would look really fun. I'm just knocking off a star because it has really typical depiction of women in comics and I really don't like that. But it is a fun one and I think I'm going to leave it on the train for someone else to find. So these are my four star books this month. Then moving on to the five star books. The first of which being The Girl Who Beat Isis by Farida Kalaf. I have a separate review up for this over here. I also got this one through Nat Galley and I am really deeply, deeply impressed with this book. It's about a girl who is abducted by Isis and how she is treated by Isis men, how she eventually gets free and she now lives in Germany and had the opportunity to start over but it is just a really impactful story and I really urge you to pick it up. Then I finally caved and picked up Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. This was such an enjoyable story. I'm really glad that I picked this up. This story follows Selena Sradathian, an assassin, as she is freed from like a prison camp in the South Mines to partake in a competition to be the king's new champion. If she wins, she has to be the king's champion for a few years and will eventually be set free. I thoroughly enjoy this. I think other people have more coherent reviews of this. If you want to know more, the next one, Crown of Midnight. This is the second part and a very worthy second installment of the series. I am not going to say too much about this because it might spoil some of you, but I already ordered all the other books in the series because I'm really enjoying this and I just want to know what happens next. So these are my five star books. I think I had a pretty decent reading month. Let me show you what I'm currently reading. Nullzeit by Juli C for German class, which is about a couple going to an island to get uh, diving lessons because the woman wants an uh, acting role in which the character 
is like a mermaid, I guess. And I am reading The Assassin's Blade, the bind up of different short stories in the Throne of Glass series, but I've been a bit stupid because I bought the wrong edition. I really don't like this edition anyway. Tell me what you guys have been reading. I think I did pretty good for non-fiction November. I didn't really actively partake in it, I guess. But I read a few non-fiction books, so that's good. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching. And until next time. Bye.